Hi, welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. I'm Kara and today we'll be doing some no line coloring. So I'm starting out with Lawn Fawn's Jellyfish Ink and I'm just stamping down one of the guys from Dandy Day, cleaning that off and one more little guy there. Whoops, <laughs> paper came with me. All right, so I'm doing a little bit different color here. This is a BV20. I decided it'd be fun to show you uh, just a different color family that you can use for your gray. Uh, here's the BV23. So what I did was I found all my shadows, the places that I thought I'd want dark, and I colored them with my lightest color just to figure out where they would be. And now I'm coming in with my uh, darker color and filling those in and just slightly. I really don't go very far at first with my darkest shading. So those dark shadows are now, I'm going to blend them out with the lighter color, the BV20, and I really don't go very far out with this either. I'm really just trying to get that shadow um, blended slightly. And then I come back in and I do it all again. So where are these dark shadows? Well, um, I think the ear are a little bit behind the front of the face. So those get a little dark at, at the head, under the neck, under the arm, um, where he's curving so that it's underneath the sun. And then um, I'm saying the light source is probably upper right, more midday. <laughs> How do you decide? Well, I just wanted to make sure that he was dark enough on the bottom part portion. And here you see I'm taking those shadows now and just connecting them more. So my B3, BV23 was blended two times with the BV20. This time I'm pulling those uh, shadows, I'm connecting them, I'm putting them together. So where the neck shadow and the underarm shadow are, that those are starting to connect. Now I'm just getting that face uh, all blended to the side. I usually wait on coloring the whole thing because I get too uh, dark if I do that. All right, this is the BV25, so a little darker, and I'm just pretty much touching the places where I want it the darkest. And sometimes they're just lines, sometimes maybe a little triangle, sometimes a dot. And then I'm blending that out with the BV23. And again, I don't go very far with that BV23. I, I just want to get those dark dark shadows to come out just a little softly into the BV23. I'm only using three markers for this blend so I'm really making sure that there there's a gradient look between them. And now the BV20 just following that BV23 out further into the lighter parts of the body. I was very excited when this jellyfish ink came out. Uh, I, I thought, well, do we need another ink? I mean, it, well, yeah, <laughs> I realized. Um, first of all, no second generation stamping is needed to get the right lightness of color. I stamp it one time, I can see it, but it's uh, light enough to take on the colors. And it's kind of a no color so it takes on whatever color marker or pencil I'm using. All right now here we're putting in the little nose and I have an RV11 and the ears as well and I'll darken that up with the RV93. I chose those inks because they're just a little bit grayer pink so they kind of blend well with my blue violets here and then I'm going to blend that out with the BV20 and now with my darkest one I'm putting just a dot where the inside of his ear would be so kind of the depth of his ear and then blending that a little bit out and around the 
out, outer part of his ear with the BV23 and now blending that all with the BV20. And I think I need to just uh, pinken that up again. So RV11. And I'm just working back and forth to get the, the right shading that I want to show that the inside of its, his ear is deeper in, but it kind of has a lightness to it with a pink. So the, just going back and forth to decide how dark the outer part should be. Added in his tail with a BV23, and now I'm starting on the stem for that dandelion. But let's talk about that tail. So usually I like to start with my lightest color and see how I like that. And if I like it, I'll go darker. But this time I started right away with that BB23. And so when I go to the next little guy down at the bottom of the picture, I'm going to start with a BB20 and I'm happier with that. Uh, but that's just one tip I guess I have is to start light, see if you like it. If you do, you can go a little darker. All right, well now I'm putting in the little lines for this dandelion and I'm adding extra lines in between to kind of make it look like it's rounded. And then you can see I'm using a warm gray in the middle and I kind of warmed up my uh, green with that as well. Uh, well, warmed up. I made it less bright using that warm gray. Now I'm coming in with a darker BV and just uh, coming out from the center with those lines making that part look darker and the outer edge is lighter. All right, well now we're on to our little guy down on the ground and again I'm coming in with my darker BV23 over where I put in the light BV20 uh, to find my shadows. I'm waiting to later to put those uh, eye, the eyes and mouth on my little mouse that's up at the top. I'll probably do those at the same time and I'll show you some uh, tips that I use to get those the placement of those in there. Uh, but a few things about no line coloring uh, I would say breathe because sometimes I find that I'm coloring this stuff and I'm not breathing. I'm <laughs> just kind of, it's like, okay, breathe. It's an aerobic exercise. Let's make this an aerobic exercise. So <laughs> we got to get some exercise while we're coloring, right? Um, and then uh, another thing is just be patient. Uh, be patient while you're coloring. Uh, be patient with yourself while you're practicing coloring. I know the first time I did a no line coloring image, I did one with the black lines and then one without the black lines. And I was showing my family and they're like, oh, I love that one with the black lines. And I thought, oh, oh great. <laughs> so it's just, it, it takes time to, to kind of navigate, feel the way that works for you. There's many ways to tackle a, a no line coloring project. Uh, one thing I like to do is put the image maybe in black line or just have the stamp set next to me so that I can see where those lines are and it helps me to kind of stay true to the illustration. I also find having a good pair of reading glasses helps me. I'm at the age now where I'm wearing trifocals <laughs> and so uh, I, I like that I have the reading portion of my glasses but I feel like I have to keep my head in one spot while I'm coloring, but if I have reading glasses on instead, uh, I can just move around a little easier, not get so locked up while I'm coloring. Um, and then also uh, caffeine. I mean, <laughs> if I'm hyped up on caffeine, I'm too jittery to do it. So just uh, I, sometimes I wait and I lay off the caffeine before I start to color because that helps me to be a little steadier. Now as you're watching this guy, you can see that he, I'm coloring him the same way as I colored the other one. So just getting into those little shadow areas and blending out from there. And then as I go, uh, I blend further and further out into the body. But uh, one thing I wanted to also say about this jellyfish ink 
it is so light that when, if you have a stamp that has been, uh, that you used your jet black ink on already, you, when you stamp with the jellyfish ink and stamp onto something, you might see a darker impression. And that's because it's, it's lifting off some of that ink from your stamp that you had on there previously. But it's, it's really an easy way, there's an easy fix to it. I just uh, stamp it with the jellyfish ink and rub it on a piece of paper, the stamp, you know, just stamp it down and then kind of rub it around and it gets the black ink off. And I do that a few times and then it, it comes out just as clear as uh, a stamp that didn't have any ink on it. So that's even a bonus. If you're a person that does not like uh, having your stamps have the, the ink residue on them, even though they're clean, they look like they're clean, um, they have a, a bit of a black look to them, well, just buy some jellyfish ink because it's kind of like the best stamp cleaner for getting that off. All right, so just finishing up this little guy here and... I'll use that BV20 to put his tail on. And now I'm going to look at his eyes and mouth and decide where things are. So I'm just looking at the packaging and I'm going to put in their mouths with a BV23. And I felt I needed a little extra shading on the upper mouse. He, uh, his face is kind of taking on a different look. I believe, I think, than the uh, illustration on the stamp. So I'm trying to see where where is that? How is it different and how can I fix it? But while I'm thinking about that, I'm going back to the lower mouse and figuring out where his eye is. So sometimes I'll just put the packaging over it so that I can look at that. And this is a darker B25 and I'm just tapping the top of the marker on until I feel like the eye is the uh, the size that I want. I'm putting the eyes onto the upper guy the same way, just tapping the marker. There's several ways I do it. Sometimes I'll just stamp the faces with a darker ink if it's still in the misty, or place the panel on a light box with the packaging behind the panel. All right, so here I was trying to figure out how is this face different? Well, I added darkness under his neck because I thought maybe his his face was a little too long. And then in the end, I'm just going to leave him with his own personality. <laughs> so I masked the two guys and I'm putting on the wavy hillside border stencil. And I'm using a blender brush and this is Twisted Citron. Distress ink. Now I use the regular distress ink because then I can go over it again with Copic marker. I can't do that with oxide inks, so that's why I'm using the regular distress inks for this. And now this is mowed lawn, and now I shifted the grass down to the edge so that my grass is protected, and I'm just putting on a light shade of the picked raspberry trying to keep a light hand here. I want a real light sky. And now I have the cloudy stencil and I'm going up the image with uh, a little bit darker and I will uh, keep getting a little darker and darker as I go up the sky. Just shifting the clouds to another area to get a different look and blending that in. When I masked these mice, I used a uh, sticky note that has the full sticky back to it, and I didn't need to uh, cut out the tails or anything because that would just that doesn't need to be covered when I'm blending. Take off their masks, and then I'm going to use a Signo White gel pen to add a little white to the dandelion fluff just to kind of sparkle it up in the middle and then on the edges. And I'm starting 
to build the card together. So I used the outside in stitched rectangles and I used them twice to build the frame and I used dandy day paper with that. And once I had it on the card, I felt like, hmm, it's kind of missing something. So I'm adding in some grass with the uh, YG11 and YG13 because that kind of reflects the same color as the uh, inks do, do, the Distress Inks. And now I'm darkening in his tail, but still with a BV20. And then I want to add some dandelion fluff into the air. So it's coming out of his dandelion, kind of cascading down the card. So I'm adding that in with jellyfish ink just the same as on his dandelion. And then I will come in with the BV20 and add in those lines. Just color over where I had stamped the, the little dandelion fluff. And then once I have that the way I want it. I'm coming in with some white gel pen again and just kind of adding that little bit of white on those little fluffy areas. All right, give him a little shadow with the C0 and thought, no, nah, I can go darker. So here's the C1 to give him a shadow and just kind of add a little shadow around the, the green as well. So now I'm much happier with the card. I feel like it, it's uh, got some flow to it, some movement, and it just kind of uh, makes more of a, a story than just having the two images on there. I hope you enjoyed the card today and it encourages you to do some no-line coloring too. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye!